Hello and welcome to a new episode of Other Record Labels. I'm your host, Scott Orr, where we talk about the art and culture of running an independent record label. And today's episode is the final episode in our series on sync licensing. And we've been just kind of tackling this topic and trying to take the mystery out of this topic of sync licensing for independent artists, but specifically sync licensing for record labels. We've been trying to tackle this subject from all different angles. And so if you've been following along or if you haven't been following along and you want to dive in a little bit deeper and look at this industry of sync licensing from multiple different angles and and the key players involved, then make sure you uh, check out all of the resources we have, including our free guide on sync licensing and all the previous episodes in this series. You can get all of that on one single page on our website by going to otherrecordlabels.com slash sync. Now, Another thing we've done to kind of culminate this whole series is we've created one of our micro courses on the topic of sync licensing. And this course is taught by my dear friend, Katrina Fry from Loretta Records. And Loretta Records is kind of a new record label. We've had them on the show before in the past. I think that Katrina is one of the hardest working individuals in the music industry right now. What she's doing with their label is incredible. This label it just does everything right. And it's a joy for me to follow them, but they actually put a huge focus on sync licensing and composing for sync licensing, which is what we're talking about in today's episode. Uh, And so Katrina has taught our micro course. It is honestly so helpful. I think it's really going to help people kind of take everything that we've discussed in this series and culminate it into into a, a lecture that will teach you about the history and how to prepare your catalog and how to build contacts and then how to effectively pitch your music and understanding the different types of sync licensing opportunities. It's a really great course. Katrina is the person to 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 teach this course and they've had some incredible, incredible sync success with their label in a short amount of time. And they're always working really hard. In this course as well, there's a uh, an FAQ, a one-on-one conversation between me and Katrina that where we kind of uh, debrief uh, uh, from her course and and dig a little bit deeper and unpack some of the stuff that she talks about in this course. So you can find out more about that by going to otherrecordlabels.com slash courses. A couple of months ago, I reached out to our community and asked if there was anyone in our community who's an independent artist or an independent record label who has some experience in sync licensing or is passionate about sync licensing and wanted to come on the show to chat. And so today, our conversation with is uh, is with an independent artist just outside of LA, and his name is Lev Phonic, that, and he has a label that is not quite launched yet, and we talk about that in this episode, but he's had quite a lot of success as a composer uh, working on different tracks, lo-fi beats and instrumental hip-hop tracks um, that have been used on television shows and commercials and in documentaries and at universities. Really interesting. And so that's what we talk about today. We talk about composing music and kind of organizing your catalog and prioritizing your catalog, uh, how to get started in composing. We talk about stems and are they important? Are they necessary? Uh, Some really interesting stories. This honestly, this has been one of my favorite interviews. We just have such a blast chatting. uh, And I think you're going to find this a lot of fun. And I think you're going to find it really helpful. And so enjoy today's episode. Uh, So tell me about, um, I'm I'm very curious. You've got like some experience with with syncing and you've got some, I think some embarrassing stories to tell. So tell tell me like kind of what you, like how you got into it. Uh, and, and, and you've, and you've, and what success you've had. I got you. I'm, I'm looking over here. I have my big computer because yeah. I have some things up here. So, so to kind of yeah, pinpoint sure. it and, and you <laughs> jog my memory because it's been a while, but, uh, what, what got me into it was a friend of mine was working for adult swim, uh, okay. cartoon network pretty much at the time. And she was like, do you have, I know you make music. Do you have anything, um, that, would you that you would like to like have a commercial on or something like that and they're also running a competition for uh, aqua teen hunger force cartoon okay um to remix their theme song okay and i was like okay i'll give it a shot so i went home remixed it brought it to her like two days later and just didn't think anything of it yeah. and then all of a sudden you know i'm signing paperwork and <laughs> i had you know, I had, it's, it's like, you have work with Schooly D and this, that, and other. So I'm signing all these documents, never wow. got paid from it, got a hat and a t-shirt, but then it, <laughs> it was like that glimmer of hope that was like, 
oh, wow, I'm not just going to be maybe on the radio or whatever. This this whole TV thing, there's something to it. Yeah, right. You so, caught the bug. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, getting that DVD and actually hearing your music on physical, you know, copy of something, even though it was, like, fan art kind of music stuff, it, it just opened up a new, a new like, avenue in my head. And I was like, oh, this is where I'm going to go now. Oh, so, nice. I started focusing and going into um, trying to look for companies. You know, we went through taxi yeah. uh, the first few times. And it's like, after you shell out enough money, you're like, okay, <laughs> I'm not going to badmouth any companies. That's fine. But, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. you know, you, you live and you learn. Sure. Uh, and then I started looking into like companies like Crucial Music. Right. Um, they picked up a few of my songs. Uh, and then... Would that be like a music library, like similar to Epidemic or something? Exactly. Yeah, so okay. Crucial Music yeah. is a is a music library. And then I got picked up by um Black Toast Music. Okay. Um, which is run by Bob Mayer, and he has a like a an extensive history of being a musician. He's played with some of the best bands in the world. And I think he used to make music for nickelodeon if, if i if okay. i'm not mistaken so that kind of brought him into the realm of wanting to start his own library and because he was getting asked to compose for different shows and things like that and then he was like well maybe i can help others get into it and then all of a sudden he has black toast and he's getting people in remarkable deals you know yeah um so he's he's definitely a good guy and May, he made uh, a lot of things happen for me when it came to advancing and getting those placements going. So can I pause you and I want to get, can you give us a background of what you were and, and uh, what kind of music you were making and what, who you were at that time? Were you a record label? Were you just an independent artist? Were you a producer? Like explain to me what it was when that adult swim opportunity came along. Okay. When the adult swim opportunity came along, I was just, trying to find myself so i was a producer at the time yeah and i was working on remixes and trying to do like hip-hop music okay uh in the atlanta area okay so you know i was i was kind of around and doing some remixes and i've hit i've had some some success and not successes with yeah. those two but it's it's like it's that learning I, I was still at a learning stage sure really um, so that was kind of at the beginning of my career and that had to be right around 2005 or so. Oh, maybe. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's been a minute. Um, and then, yeah, that, that was adult swim. And since then, like before I even got into licensing with the libraries and stuff after that, a friend of a friend was like, can you do, can you release some of your music? We want to use it for like an FBI recruiting video. <laughs> and I was like, well, that's weird, but yeah, sure. Because I make like instrumental chill out stuff. So I started okay. going into from hip hop yeah. to instrumental down to the down tempo chill yeah. out. Vibe. Okay. Which is and really it, popular right yeah. now. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. definitely. And it was like at the same time, you know, CSI was on TV oh, and a lot right. of those yeah, like, yeah. episodes. I was like, everybody was like, we can always hear your music on CSI. It would be amazing. It's when they're like, figuring out things, right? When they're looking yeah. at. <laughs> They're like looking at all the data and figuring it out. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It's so true. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like my music always fit into that category. Everybody has always told me it's so cinematic. It needs to be on TV. Yeah. Yeah. So I just kind of took that as, you know, as a hint and tried to follow that path. So from, you know, the FBI to a recruiter uh, film for UCLA, I think it was. Oh, okay. Some students asked me. And, yeah. You know, they shot me a couple of bucks that they were working on. And I was like, oh, okay. But nothing like big. But I was like, I'm on the right path. Yeah, I'm for on sure. The right path, you know? And, um, and just to interrupt that for a second, it is actually interesting because we always think of major networks and HBO and all these things as these opportunities, but like money can come from universities. They can come from the FBI, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it, and like they need music and, uh, and they pay. So that's, that's kind of encouraging. Absolutely. Not everything is I, sexy. Yeah. Not everything is sexy. And mm -hmm. I, I enjoy, um, comedy podcasts. So, like I don't listen to a lot of music Yeah. because I get influenced by it. Sure. Um, but I mean a lot, like 
I, I, it's hard to explain. I try and stay away from it when I'm in creative mode. I get that. I also have a radio show, so it's almost impossible not to listen <laughs> to new music. <laughs> but, um, you know, from the point of that FBI thing and it being not sexy and this, that, and the other, I, I actually, I actually started making recently during COVID, um, theme songs for people's podcasts. Oh, I nice. just put it out there. I was like, if anybody has a podcast yeah. that they're working on, I make quick beats all the time. So yeah. I'll give you, you know, something for a fee. And, you know, cool. so I've been brokering my own deals just nice. with people on there and their startup, uh, like comedy podcasts and stuff. And do like they that. get so, to keep that forever? Uh, yeah, I let, okay. I let them keep it. I let them keep it. And you don't um, reuse that anywhere else. No, I don't. I don't. Cool, cool, cool. I, I, I've actually made some custom tracks for friends podcast that were strictly for them. Like, yeah, yeah. One of my friends was like, I need it to sound like, 70s soul mixed with Wu Tang something something, <laughs> and I just kind of put it together, and I yeah. was like, I hope this works for you. Yeah. And he's like, It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> those are those are the best times when actually somebody else is very happy with what you've done. Oh sure, yeah, and yeah. And they're like, This this fits exactly what I was thinking, you know. So how long between 2005 and when you started getting representation? Um, representation came right around 2010, 2011. Okay. And, I and was, were you taking things much more seriously then? Definitely. Yeah. I was, I was tired. I was in a sales job. I was selling Hondas. They sell themselves, but you know, <laughs> not for me, but I, I, <laughs> but I, I, I did it for a while and it's, it's good money and you can, you can build up your studio yeah. or whatever yeah, your yeah. label or whatever. Yeah. From that money but if you're if you don't yeah. like yeah well anyway so <laughs> you don't like the people who buy hondas <laughs> yeah yeah that's like hondas that's like, fine <laughs> yeah i love i love hondas i actually own one myself i sold one to myself but um uh the thing about that is, is like that's when the first major call came in right. we had been submitting music uh my label partner and i uh had been submitting music to different companies mm -hmm. crucial was one of the main ones. And we, like, I think we put seven songs together that we made together. Okay. And we just, you know, they picked like three, I think. Yeah. And then shot down four, put them in the library. And then you, you just kind of forget about it. After sure. A while. Yeah. So like they had been in the library for maybe six to eight months. And then I get a call while I'm at Honda. They're like, you have a phone call line one. I checked line <laughs> one and it's my label mate. And he's like, we got it. I was like, we got what? He goes, we got it. We got picked up. We, our song is going to be on TV. And I was like, cool. That's awesome. Wow. And I'm trying to remember which show it is. But um, yeah, that's where the first funny story comes. It was, it was a Lifetime Network. Basically. And they, okay. And they took it from, Epi, uh, from Crucial. From oh, Crucial. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Crucial was our first placement. And, uh, and was that good like, money? Like, or, or was it just an encouraging money? Well, yeah, it was, it was definitely decent. I think. If I'm not mistaken, we ended up with 1,200 a piece. Holy, that's really good. Yeah, for our for our first placement for it a wasn't music bad library at all. too is pretty yeah. interesting. And does yeah, Crucial for, take money from that too? Yeah, they take 50 up front. So oh it's my like, gosh, so that yeah, was a man. big one. Yeah. Wow. So yeah, lifetime. And then you, I, what I will say to everybody, uh, if they're listening or not, or whatever the case may be, whoever listens to this or whoever just make sure that you have your your performing rights paperwork yeah. done you yes. know have your pro's done yes because that's extra money of, right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. definitely yeah. it's all on the back end right so like when you when you get signed with like crucial they become the they are the publisher yeah and then you get paid as a writer um and, and uh like i one of the great things about publishing is it's far less money than your what the the twelve hundred you're talking about now, or or that probably would have been five thousand to start by the time it right. got down to you, but right. like the the publishing and the from your the PROs is it's not a lot of money, but it can happen when that's it can happen all the time if that if that movie or TV show is played a lot. I have a track on say yes to the dress that gets played on reruns like <laughs> like yes. every, once a quarter, twice a quarter, and it's you know. 20 yeah. bucks here and there. It's, it's funny. Do, do they do a breakdown with your PRO? I don't know who your PRO is because, and you're in Toronto, so it's probably different. Yeah. But do they do like a breakdown of each country that's playing that show? Yes. Yeah. And yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's the yeah. interesting part too. Totally. To see what 
other countries are really like playing a, a show from ABC, you know, yeah. from American television and how they have it on repeat, like consistently. Yeah, you're like, no, it's true. Wow. I had a buddy who had a track on Shit's Creek, which was a really popular show. I and love that show. It, it's a Canadian show, and when and he got the placement, it was the show hadn't blown up yet. It was like this kind of like uh, underground Canadian show, and then it got. Yeah. It blew up really big, and then it started getting played on American networks. And all of a sudden, he's getting more and more of that PRO money because Great. you know it, it, it's now being played in America, which has a way bigger audience in Canada. So, yeah, yeah that's great advice, man. Yeah, definitely keep keep those up to date, and and always update every time before you put uh, any of your songs out. Do any, any of that. Make sure that everything with your PROs is up to date. Yeah. And yeah. ready to rock and roll because yeah. you don't want to miss out, you know. And yeah. I, I think they will actually go back and 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 but not for long. Yeah. yeah, but it's not for not long. long yeah, it, yeah. The, I don't know how it works with ASCAP and BMI, but in Canada and and I believe in the UK as well, and a lot of other countries, is that if it's not used up, it will be divvied up amongst the their locals. So like right. it will be given to all, you know, if American PRO money is not collected from, from SOCAN, which is in Canada, then it's given to Canadian mm -hmm. artists. So it's, yeah, it will, it will get eaten up for sure. Your money will yeah. be gone. Okay. So, um, okay. So the, keep telling me how this is going then. So what happens after the lifetime? So after the lifetime placement, we're excited. We're oh, yeah. happy. You yeah. know, we're, we're, we're moving and shaking. Let's so record another keep... hundred tracks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So everything that we do, and you, you just put out something two nights ago, and it was like, keep, uh, keep licensing in mind when you're creating. Yes. So that's basically yeah. what we were doing. It's yeah. like, okay, what, what got sold the first time? We made like this trip hop down tempo kind of like Porter's head kind of beat. Yeah. So we just started working on that. We made a whole project around that. And, you know, in between time, he's getting placements. Like he got a Kardashian's placement. Oh. And I was like, what? You oh, know? Oh, wow. And I, I, I mean, you know, after yeah. this, I might have to give you his information because he's yeah. got he's got a couple of, of, of big hits like that. Too. That's and awesome. It's like, He's a, he's a great guy too. But um can yeah. I ask you a question real quick on that note? No, does no does the the lifetime placement and going back to that adult swim thing, even though you didn't get paid for it, that can still go on your resume. Does that do anything for you when you're trying to get other placements that hey, this guy, you know, has a track on Kardashian's Lifetime Network Adult Swim? Yes. Does it, that help? It, it does. It does help because one one thing that I will say it it helps with is that you're you're proven to be a professional now. Okay. You're yeah, you're yeah. proven that you that you actually can work with not just one entity but a couple of libraries. Yeah. And one thing is don't cross don't don't step on toes. Yeah. So like th those exclusive deals are with Crucial and I have some with Black Toast. Like I can never cross paths sure. or put those songs anywhere yeah. else. Yeah. Because you don't want to blow your opportunity, you know. Yeah. And it seems like sometimes you're like, "Oh man, they've had these songs forever, but one day, yeah. you know, you just get a phone call and it's like, wow, oh, this is an amazing day. So, yeah, you know, um, we have this uh, sync licensing course coming out with Katrina Fry, who's in your neck of the woods at Loretta mm -hmm. Records. And she said this thing when we were when we were putting the course together in, in, in the frequently asked questions and that really blew my mind is she's like when that happens or mm -hmm. you know when you you have something that's tied up with somebody and it's not getting used or if you write what you think is like a really great licensable track and it doesn't hit or it doesn't get picked up you know or even if you do have a song that gets picked up she was saying outright that song like write a better song than that like use that yeah. as the bar and just outright that song. And I thought, wow, as a songwriter myself, that is motivating, you know, to think like you could never tell a songwriter that he's written his best song, right? You right. know, that would right. be, that would, there, there's no way they would stand for that. And so right. I kind of like the idea is, wow, I think my, my two best songs are tied up with this music library for the next three years. Well, I'm just going to go write two new better ones, <laughs> you know? Definitely. And um, I go to Berkeley. Currently, okay. yeah. I'm taking a, I'm taking a little bit of break. I've I've been going through about COVID, and I'm like, I need the rest of the year off. <laughs> sure. But one of my one of my instructors said, "Your last song, uh, your next song is your best." 
Yeah. That's what it was. Right, your right. next song is your best song yeah. because you're always growing and you're yeah. always progress. Yeah. So every song you're on, you're honestly going to probably outright yourself every time. If you keep that hunger in. Yes. Yeah. You, know? you really should. Yeah. If you, if you have that love for music and this is what you do, you're always going to outright yourself. Yeah. And if, if you know what starts to work and your sound is your sound, like I, I'm just falling into my sound. I'm 44 years old. Mm. I just found out who Don't I am. Don't look that, man. You look half that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, you look half brother. that. Our audience, <laughs> our audience can't see right now. He looks half that. <laughs> thank you, brother. I, I get that all the time. It could I, be the I HD camera. It. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, uh, okay. So, sorry, I interrupted you. Go back to your journey no then problem. at a post lifetime. All right. So, uh, yeah, lifetime. And Kardashians. Uh, yeah, Kardashians. Th that's my friend. He's getting on uh, mm -hmm. these placements. I'm getting placements. Um, so from there, let's see, we go from there to FBI, UCLA. Yeah, it's UCLA. Lifetime. I got with Black Toast. Oh, so the first thing that he got me on Black Toast, I think, was HBO Girls. He oh, got me on. Big show. To, yes. And I wow. think it's on one of the DVDs, though. Like, I think it's like season six or something. So it wasn't on the broadcast? It, was, it wasn't on the podcast, but I think it's music for one of the menus or something. Oh, okay. Okay. So, you know, but, when you're going through scenes or whatever, you, you're still there. But it's like they have so much music for everything yeah. that you don't realize sometimes where your music is going to be placed at. Well, they also, yeah, okay, a DVD menu is very possible, but I've also heard of, and I don't know how common DVD box sets are anymore, but yeah, uh, it's also that there was a time where you would license a really big song to broadcast mm -hmm. on HBO, but mm -hmm. then for the fans who buy the box sets, they can't afford the rights to buy that same song to, to print the DVDs. And so they go to you to get a cheaper version of like a bigger song, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So that's my, a big deal. Yeah. One of my friends actually scored the entire show for, uh, it was called Las Vegas. Okay. It was yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. I remember he, that show. Yeah. He, he scored, he scored everything. Wow. And because of some kind of deal that they had when it came to DVD and when they put it on other yeah. Netflix, Netflix or whatever yeah. they put it on streaming, they changed his whole catalog. They had somebody oh. in-house rescore all the episodes. Oh, wow. That's yeah, a bummer. That's a bummer. Yeah, because you think you're, you know, yeah. he thought he was going to get this, this yeah, get huge pay, payout. And it's like, no, we just changed it. So how you long know? were you with Black Toast before you got this HBO thing? Um, man, I signed with Black Toast. I signed my first songs to Black Toast right around 2010, 2011. So that HBO thing probably came years later, 2016, maybe 2015, wow. 2016, wow. right around there. Yeah. So, so it's a long things, game, they, eh? It's a long they, game. Oh, it's definitely a long game. I've had... In between those times, I had something placed on CNN when they have like little bumps at the end yeah, yeah. and they were going to commercial or whatever, like yeah. those little things. Um, you know, it's all over the place. ABC Mistresses was the next big placement from Black Toast. Okay. And that's the one where it's like, I'm still seeing money come from that. Every no quarter. way. ASCAP. And at Finland, they love the show for some reason. <laughs> they just keep playing my episode too. And I'm like, wow. Dude, Very cool. I will I will say this is just a fun little uh, like interlude to what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, don't get too excited on listening to your music on television. After the first <laughs> few times, it becomes to be a, a chore because you're listening oh. the whole episode. And yeah. You're like, where is it? Where is it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, that, that first show that we got what, uh, with DJ Unwan and I, we, where we placed our song Red Dawn. I can't remember the name of the television show, but it was like a series where the detectives were like looking for this guy and he's a killer and he's romancing this dead woman at, at this oh. dinner. And then he's like, maybe we should set a little new music and he presses play and our song comes on. And I'm like, yeah, I can't show this to my friends. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, like this he's is, like a serial killer. Like he's like a psycho. Yeah, he's like a serial killer. And, there's and, like he's, a, and he's like romancing a dead body, a dead woman at dinner. <laughs> he's like a candle at dinner and he turns our music on and I'm like, uh. Grandma, oh. stop watching. <laughs> stop watching. <laughs> it's so 
it's it's funny yeah. now, but at the, yeah. at the first time you see it, you're like, oh, that's Ooh. disheartening. Oh yeah. So so wait. <laughs> So you're watching the episode, you're you're yeah. seeing this creepy scene and he's he's like, let's put some music on. And you're like, please no, please no, please no. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Not this scene. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, any other scene but this. And he's like <laughs> grabbing her hand and kissing her hand. She's dead. Oh, and it's gross. just it's just the worst first. Is, is that, that what you that, is that what you had in mind when you wrote the song? No, absolutely that, no. not. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, you but know, it's it's hilarious because I told I told Brad about it and he's like, What? I said, Here, I'll just send it to you. So I sent him like mm -hmm. the little small YouTube clip of the of that scene. And he's like, Yeah, we can't really show anybody. Yeah. That. I was yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's a little disturbing. It is, <laughs> yeah. But you know, it, you could just say, Hey, you know, it, it was on this this show with this network. Yeah. And you know, it's so interesting like what you're talking about because to me, it's like this kind of thing where like if you're grinding, 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 and I don't know if you were grinding every day, you know, you're at Honda for a bit, but if you're grinding all the time, it's the kind of thing that could take 10, 20 years to start Absolutely. to build up this thing where the back end's paying and then you're getting new deals and you're getting a con, you know, contacts and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like That's I, like I was saying before, like I'm 44, I've been doing this, geez, my first rap album I did was I was like 16 or 17. Oh, wow. So I've been doing wow. this for a very yeah. long time. Yeah. And I, I jumped away from rap and I started producing and then I fell in love with that. And mm -hmm. I just kept producing like hip hop and R and B. I've done remixes for quite a few people. And then like that game dried up and it just became this, this licensing thing. I love yeah. sync licensing. It's, yeah. it's simple. My goal is to actually like really be in contact firsthand with some of these um like the 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 music supervisors for certain networks and shows and sure. things like that yeah yeah because i you know i love i love being part of the libraries i have several others uh that i've signed to but it's like sometimes you want to build a rapport with these people yourself yeah and kind yeah. of cut oh, out sure. that middleman yeah so yeah, um, what you guys are doing with uh, having a course coming out, I, that's awesome because cool. people need this and people ask me all the time, how did you do this? And yeah. it's like, I just kept doing it. Yeah. And I will say to those trying out, keep going, keep pushing. I, if, if somebody's asking you for money up front, most likely that's not the route you yeah, want. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, there you know? might be some exceptions, but no, I, that, you know, and I haven't come across that anywhere in this series. And we still have another interview with a, uh, a great music supervisor that's coming out. But, you know, across, across, across this, well, actually, when this interview it will be out, that will have already been out. But, but like across this yeah. whole series, um, uh, nobody has ever said that. I haven't heard that other than the cautionary tale that you're talking about. So right. that's great advice. Uh, and, and I can think of, you know, without assassinating any of those companies, they're not hard to find. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and especially when they reach out to you or they place an ad in a magazine, right. Then, you right. know, whoa, whoa, hold on a second. There's some big money in it for you. You know, you're right. hungry for this. Why? So, right. That that's really good advice. So, have you um, unlocked anything? Have you figured this out in any way? H have you gotten better at composing or at at pitching? Uh, absolutely, I've I've gotten way better at kind of just um, knowing what what my like I said, I know what my sound is now. Yes, okay. So I went from I went from this early hip hop thing to um, what is now like if if. People ask me what, you know, who, who people compare you to the most. It would be like Bonobo, Flying Lotus, right. um, artists like that. Right. So it's more, it's more instrumental driven. Sure. But it's like, you know, I'm using organic sounds. I'm using real percussion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then electronic synthesizers to boot. But, you know, I'm running things through four track tapes. and Oh, it's, cool. It's a whole process, you oh, know. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like things that I picked up this whole in this whole lifetime of music yeah and my my blessing and my curse is that i love all music and i can kind of create whatever like yeah. i've been working with a couple of punk rock groups recently i've tracked drums electronic drums for a country artist in in, in this area right you know right. It, there's yeah. always something for but me to do does it benefit you to have a sound a specific sound in the licensing world 
Yes, because um, it's it's helped me tremendously uh, when it comes to certain things where it was like we need a we need a house sounding house inspired you know dance track for so and so scene like this, and it's like okay, I'm gonna put this out there, or my my you know my library guy at Black Toast he'll he'll do whatever and put he he puts all your music wherever it can be right right and it's it's like if you if you have your sound and you have that sound that's like a flying lotus or a bonobo you know those things get placed yeah. all over the place you yeah. know you can get car commercials and things like that and uh, it's it's that new like I guess it's acid jazz reborn or whatever yeah. kind of vibe. Are, you know? So are as a composer, and I want to ask you about the label side of things in a second, but as a composer, are you, uh, are you trying to be really prolific? Are you trying to bang out? Is it a numbers game? Are you trying to bang out hundreds and hundreds of tunes or are you saying, no, I'm going to spend a week or, or even a month on one great track. Um, it varies. It changes all the time, okay. but like with this, with this latest project, I, like I said, I've been in school for the last two, two and a half years at Berkeley mm-hmm. online. And, uh, you know, I've made a lot of those assignments, my last few releases. So it's like, yeah, it might take 12 weeks, but you know, ever since I've been off um, school, I was like, I haven't been off for almost three years. I'm going to make something for the rest of the year. Yeah. I'm going to get myself six months and I'm going to make as many songs as I possibly can. Yeah. So right now I know all those teachings. I mastered Ableton as yeah. much as you uh, possibly can. Cause they're <laughs> yeah. always changing something. Yeah. But you know, I've, I've mastered Ableton. I've, I've produced in logic. I have pro tools. I have all this stuff. I bought the big six <laughs> SSL mixer. Oh, wow. Of big, big daddy thing, you know? And it's like, for an in-home studio, it's the best possibly yeah. thing that I can get. So I'm kind of quality over quantity. Good, but I can but I can pump out a song a night if need be. <laughs> yeah, that, <laughs> you know what? That's so smart. Quality over quantity, but you can do quantity if that's yeah, what somebody I, wants. And and I can uh, <laughs> I can dive into like straight EDM, not just yeah. my sound. If somebody wants an EDM track or like a rock track or you know punk yeah. rock or anything like that. I have the means, I have the friends around here where I can just grab anybody and be like, they need this, you know? Yeah. And then I guide my other friends. I, I teach them how to grab their PROs and to sign up for all this stuff so they don't miss out on anything and that they have their own, you sure. know? I was reading this book recently and there was this line about, you know, quality versus quantity. And mm-hmm. it's like the best to get for you know the best for any type of content is quality and quantity which exactly you know nobody ever everyone's like well which one is it do i make a lot or do i make one that's really great it's like do both buddy do both make a hundred things that are amazing exactly exactly and that's like, what like a, my, you know tom brady yeah. does that yeah like my like my instructor said you know your your next song is your best song yeah. And that, that's your next one is your best one. Yeah. And that's, that's really what, what it goes back to is like, all right, let's pump out some music. Uh, you know, I got a couple of guys right now who want me to do some hip hop stuff. I haven't done hip hop music in a long time. Yeah. And I'm like, how do I do this again? <laughs> <laughs> Cause he's like, I want that nineties boom bap sound. And I'm like, yeah, that's where I came from. So How do we, we do this again? When we, ta- <laughs> when we talked it in the beginning, you said that you uh, only recently started thinking about starting a record label. Is that right? Yeah. Um, because How did you I, segue into that? I found uh, my label. Uh, I, I signed with Velvet Music Group 12 years ago. I'm looking at my, okay. my, uh, my profile right here because my memory is a little, it, it gets away from me sometimes. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. But I signed with them 12 12- years ago almost 13 now and uh that was with my friend dj unwind and he's been he's been getting his thing so the the label was called velvet music group okay and not only did i sign with him i kind of became partners because it was just the two of us yeah for a long time so we kind of grew that label together um and because of you know life and kids and things like that he can't take as much time right now to sure. focus on his music as he would like to. He's still doing it. Yeah. He's still mixing and mastering for people, which he's wonderful at that, by the way. But, um, you know, we're just, he, we're, he, I'm growing 
in one way and he's growing in another way. And I was like, you know what? I still want to release music for Velvet Music Group and I will always be signed to Velvet Music Group. This right. Is, but I want to start my own label and my own project right Yeah. Now. So I'm taking all of your advice and <laughs> doing all of, uh -oh. all of this stuff. And I've, I've gone through labels and I've gone through all these different vibes and, you know, you know how this industry can just beat you in the head sometimes, yeah, yeah. you know, and over and over and over again until you get it. And then you're like, I can just do this myself. So I've had the dream of having my own label for a long time, but I never really thought I could do it. Right. If that makes any yeah. sense. I was like, yeah, I, I'm, a, I'm already producing. I'm doing all these remixes. I, yeah. I'll just stay an artist and I'll find, you know, different labels to release me mm -hmm. and different things like that. But Right now, it's like I think it's time. You know? <laughs> well, and I be, found the, I oh, found the wonderful Scott Orr at the right time. You know, <laughs> <laughs> he sounds lovely. So, um, <laughs> uh, will it, would this be a label that have you launched the label? Is it going? I'm I'm actually working on everything right now. I okay. will show you, so you don't think I'm pulling your leg. Oh wow! There you go. Oh my goodness! I printed That's everything out. This is everything. Uh, this listen, has uh, hold on, our 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 audio only <laughs> listeners here. <laughs> he's oh, got yeah, this. I'm sorry. He's got this uh, massive uh, binder <laughs> here, even with the other record labels branding on it. That's amazing. Oh my yeah. goodness! He's got the checklist all printed off, and I love to see that. I'm a I'm a big paper guy. I I got to get out of the screen sometimes. So I have I have to. Yeah, I'm old. I'm old school, man. I I have to be able to see it and write it down and go for my goals and you know I, and your checklist is wonderful it's like i'm you know <laughs> maybe halfway through it but i'm getting there good and good. i'm like and i really started digging in in june so it's like yeah you yeah. know I've, I've i've done everything for for my artwork and and everything like that i've registered the name i've, I've got everything it's my business so uh, i just want to let our listeners know i did not expect him to be saying all this i, I feel like they're gonna <laughs> think that i paid you to come no this here. is this is not this is not a setup this is just an endorsement this is a sponsored how, ad yeah no this is this is just an endorsement for how great i thought scott's program was i started watching your videos and i remember one night i was putting this massive my new desk together i have this massive desk over here yeah and it finally fits all the gear that i needed to fit and i was i just kept watching it and i during the daytime, I, I actually take care of my mom. I'm an in-house care, caregiver, too. Oh, amazing. So she she's she's disabled, and I've been taking care of her for a while here. Yeah, good um, for you. Especially during COVID. She had a sure. caregiver, but we won't go into that. Yeah. And, but anyway, she came and watched me build the desk, and I was watching you on YouTube on, <laughs> on the TV, and she's like, he's pleasant. He's very nice. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, he's from Thanks, Toronto. Mom. And she goes, she goes, uh, it makes sense. We have a lot of friends from Toronto. <laughs> oh, yeah. Are, some of the nicest people on the planet so it's like it's like when 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 i when i found you i was really like intrigued and i went into all your back catalogs and i was listening to a lot of the interviews with other labels and mm. i'm just trying to figure out my lane because yeah like right now i hang out with a lot of people um i was djing for a place in la called the gold line Okay, and that is associated. It's right under Stone Throw Records. Oh, nice! If you know about Stone Throw, yeah, that's course. Peanut Butter Wolf, and yeah. you know they got Mad Lib, and they had yeah. everybody. Yeah, you know, they're, they're Doom, my, all those guys. They're on my hit list. If I could get them on here, I love them. Um, well, yeah, actually, let's I will, talk after. I will, let's talk. I after. will definitely talk with Please. you about it. So, um, you know, my last little hoorah there. We, I, I played back to back with Peanut Butter Wolf. Not. It wasn't set up that way. Sure. He just, it's his bar. It's yeah. his records. Yeah. And he wanted to hear a few things. So he's like, do you mind if I keep playing? And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, I've been looking at these examples and I know some of these people, mm -hmm. you know, Adrian yeah. Young is right next door. He's like two doors down and he's the guy who composed like Black Dynamite. He's been working with uh, Shahid Muhammad from Tribe Called Quest nice. on making like live instrumentation, that 70s soul. Yeah. There's no computers in his studio. It's all analog oh, cool. stuff. Oh, so cool. it's like we have this little section in LA called Highland Park, and that's like it's real artsy and yeah, it's it's thriving. Yeah. So it's like I get to meet a lot of those people that are in that scene and see how they work and see how they have built their brands and their labels and things like this. So I've always been an observer. Good for outside. you for getting out of the 
office, getting out of the YouTube and going to meet real people. Cause that's where yeah. the opportunities come. Yeah. That's yeah. the only reason that I'm, I haven't even moved up where you guys are. Cause I, I, I think I'm Canadian at heart, but <laughs> <laughs> anytime, but, uh, come on up. Yeah, anytime. I, um, I'm, I'm definitely like so close to LA. Everybody's like, Oh, you're 70 miles away. That's pretty close. I was closer than everybody else in the world. That's what I always tell them. <laughs> so it's like, I love, being able to get in yeah and in and mix in the thick of things and then being able to come back up here to okay you know these mountains and these snow-capped mountains in the winter time oh my and, gosh and getting away from that stuff, yeah you know yeah you can go skiing 30 minutes this way or that way there's lakes here there's, wow i live in kind of paradise you know so when you are talking about you know discovering your label and and what makes you unique it will sink play a role in that? Will that be a big um, part of what you do? Almost in the sense that it's like label slash sync agent? Yes. In your um, mind? That's what I, that's what I want to do. Yeah. Actually. I'm, I, I, I won't tell all of my goals yeah, right no, now because there's a, it's a, it's a, it's a lot, but I definitely look forward to more sync licensing like one of my last classes at berkeley was the actual sync licensing class oh cool and you know i'm i'm getting serious about it again yeah. because i'm gonna say i'm gonna say this and i'm just gonna be honest covid broke me down really to the point where like yeah mentally where i was like i uh, have to rebuild myself back up because right. you know i lost about 12 people oh, and no. that were close family and friends and things like that and i i just kind of secluded and stayed to myself uh um, wow and you know, because that's all we could do. Like, yeah. my, like I said, my mom's disabled. She has a lot of health problems. So, like, I had to keep that scary monster away from her for two and a half years. Yeah. Good you for know? you, man. I tried my best, brother. Yeah, good you know? for you. I was, I still mask up when I need to and do, do what I, whatever yeah, I need to. That's but amazing. Like, well, gosh, I mean, that's crazy. And, and, I, and I think, you know, that's so, it's so true. Like, you know, COVID is right now. I mean, we are seeing, like the the like the ripple effects of it eh? you know like Definitely. it's and and how it, it affects things and uh, you yeah. know i still haven't been to a show yet and and yeah. it's not because i'm afraid but it's because i got used to being lazy and sitting at home and you know so yeah, there's very interesting <laughs> things how it affects our 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 music career um we're very similar i only go out if i'm getting paid or I, I, or if I'm going to support somebody that I know that I really love. So yeah, well, I have been out a few times and you know, there's, there's a couple of DJ gigs and I know quite a few people in, in the LA scene that are really getting good things going on right now. That's so it's awesome. like, I want to go and support, but I try not to stick around too long and I'll keep my mask on when I can, you know? So says, you just never know. You never know. <laughs> so in closing, what are you doing now for sync? Like to, uh, to, to try to get yourself the next deal. Is it pretty much just submitting new tracks to, to black toast? Yeah, it's going to be black toast. There's, um, what I, what I would suggest to is like, don't, don't exclude yourself, uh, from one or the other, you know, exclusive deals, non-exclusive deals. Okay. Everybody's like, which is better. Yeah. This is, this is my suggestion. Get a whole catalog of songs, maybe 10. It, it doesn't have to be a lot. Yeah. Five to 10. Send them to any of these companies. You can send them to Crucial. Send them to Black Toast. Tell yeah. them, tell Bob I sent you. Yeah. Mike Davis, Lev Phonic, tell him that <laughs> I sent you. And he'll he'll be like, okay, we'll give it a look, you know? Yeah. Um, And if he does pick up certain songs, out of those 10, he might choose three for an exclusive deal. Sure, yeah. Throw those in the library, go to Crucial with your remaining seven. Oh, yeah, yeah, good idea. If you, if you do that, then Crucial picks up two, then you have five left over. Then try and work the non-exclusive companies and see which ones reply best. And then, because there's hundreds of them. What so a I great, say, I, that's, that's such a great idea. Yeah, so that's what I'm doing now is I'm literally building my next few albums. I think I'm going to do an EP, a couple of singles here and there. I'm following your suit. I'm going to do band camp uh, with like a specialty drop. Yeah. You know, yeah. that you can get like two extra songs and then nice. three songs will go to Spotify. Two extras will be on band camp. Yeah. Cool. Come cool. and see me if you want those, you yeah. know, and just different things. And there's a lot of different elements that I'm throwing in right now. It's like I have 10,000 songs that I probably will never touch again. 
sure. things, ideas throughout all the years. Yeah. I'm starting to take those, run them through four track tapes, doing all the stuff. And I'm just going to start putting out sample packs. Oh, nice. Of all yeah. the songs that I thought may be something and they're yeah, a little yeah. old or whatever. I let people pick through and have the sounds that they want. I'll set those up on a website soon here. Real quick, what, have, are you, what are you sending to Black Toast? Or are, do you give them, instru- obviously they're instrumentals, right? For the most part. Yeah, most of mine are instrumental. The stems I as will, well? I, yeah, I'll, I'll send them stems. Um, it's a must. Bob is a must. He will always say, send me an instrumental version. Yeah, that's good. You know? I've heard that multiple, multiple times now. That's no longer a nice to have. Yeah, a- absolutely. Yeah. You yeah. need to think about that. If you're going to start doing sync licensing, definitely stem out your music. Um, mm-hmm. Stem out your music for DJs. If you're in an electronic music world, stem out your music for DJs and see if you can get on Beatport and sell your stem singles. Okay. Because you can mix stems in Tractor. Okay. You can mix stems in all these different new like um, programs. So like you can take the kicks or, or the, the drums and the bass and the uh, accompaniments and vocals, boom, 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 here you go. And you can mix those and yeah. buy those singles like that. Oh, it's, okay. it's very interesting. It's kind of like when Kanye West came out with that little thing. Yeah, and was, yeah, it was called yeah. the stem mixer yeah, thing. Yeah, I remember that. That was cool. Basically, it's a player with an EQ in it. And it it it... It focuses on certain frequencies. Okay. That's all it is. Okay. But uh, when you break it down into actual stems, you know, you, you can mix on my tractor board. I'm looking at it right now. You can mix four elements at the same time. Right. And then like if another artist has a stem mix, so you can take your bass out. And if it's in the same key or whatever, yeah. you can drop that bass in from a different song and kind of make a remix on the fly. Oh, wow. It's very, very interesting. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and so when, when we say stems, are you doing... Uh, like how many stems are you making or are you just kind of bussing all the percussion drums together into one group? Definitely. That's, that's what I'm that's doing. That's pretty much uh, it. Yeah. That's, that's so why there I, could be a song. I have only like four or five, six stems kind of thing. Yeah. That's okay. why I'm, I've invested in this, this big six here. I do all of the like heavy duty, uh, the intricate EQing and compression yeah. and all that stuff in the box still. Right. And then once I have the stems out, like I always have my kick drum on mono channel one, snare, mono channel two, bass three, whatever. Yeah. And then all the accompaniments. But I usually have six to eight stems. Okay. You know? Okay. And even, even the way that I have it set up here is like all my effects are bust out through uh, the last, the last little channel here. Yeah. So yeah. through channel 11 oh, nice. and 12 on here, I just have my, my, my um, effects coming through. Okay. So say, cause I will say this too, if you're doing licensing, if you're doing sync uh, licensing stuff, um, take out all any extra vocals that are like, um, like people talking or yeah. if you have chatter yeah. in the background, they, yeah. they, they definitely don't want to totally. They, they yeah. will tell you to lose that quickly. So always keep, your your music sessions close at hand if you if you have your own fine if you have an engineer make sure that he keeps them and you keep them and you can yeah. get to them as quickly as possible that's because great. those opportunities work like that and like with crucial my friend is you know he gets these replies all the time and it's like we need this kind of music blah 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 by tomorrow night you know, and yeah. he's on that level with the crucial. Yeah. So right. it's like he's okay. always hit me up. Do you have anything? Yeah, I've heard those too. Yeah. yeah. Crazy, eh? Yeah. 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 So um it, okay, so can you right now, this is coming out in a couple of weeks. If people are listening, uh, is there somewhere you'd like them to check out? Yeah, you can actually check me out on Instagram. Uh my artist name is Lev Phonic, L E V. P H O N I C. Okay. Um, and it's just that a, on Instagram. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Instagram, uh, Facebook. If you, if you just type in Lev Bonic on Google, it'd take you where, where you need to go. That's a good name. I have everything set. I I'm rebuilding my website as we speak. So I know I've been getting some flack about that. People are like, where's your website? I want to look at it again. <laughs> I'm rebuilding it. I'm redoing it because of all these new projects and stuff. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to follow you there so I can check out that SSL. Cause it looks, looks real pretty. Thank you, my friend. And, uh, I, I, I appreciate this. I will also say that, um, it, it's just, you, you're helping people in a tremendous way oh, with thanks, everything man. that you do, man. So it's, it's like, I'm, I'm glad to be part of this. Um, 
and hopefully we get to talk again soon. And I, I'll send you some names and you can talk to some other people that are in my same lane too. Here. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I appreciate it so much. And thank you for being transparent with us about, you know, your success and, and, and some tips. It's going to be super helpful. What a great guest. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, and I hope that you have uh, been encouraged by this. I mean, obviously this series we've learned and in, in we talked about in today's episode is this is a long game. And, and you know, I've given an example of, of uh, a track that I worked on 11 or 12 years ago that's still getting syncs today. And it's about over time building up. And this is true for licensing in any industry too. If you're in the arts licensing, if you design posters, if, you know, if you're in film and TV, whatever it is, this is true. It's about building a long, uh, a large catalog, a large repertoire, and that over years that can start to bring you passive income. And it's about composing every day. It's about releasing every day. It's about always be thinking about sync. And so that's something that I've learned from this conversation today, but I've also learned from this entire series. Make sure that you catch up on this whole series by going to otherrecordlabels.com slash sync. And remember our new course on sync licensing specifically for record labels. It's one of our micro courses and you can get it as part part of our whole bundle of courses or just on its own. It's taught by my dear friend, Katrina Fry of Loretta Records. And you can find out more about that course by going to otherrecordlabels.com slash courses.